Howdy, howdy, howdy. Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's see, where are we? I see the Swiss franc up there. The Swiss saltine against the dollar. Let's see what it's doing. And then uh, right there, you can see it's moving up a little bit, meaning a little strength in the dollar. Let's see what J4X shows. There's Mr. and Mrs. Gold. Let's move over to the Swiss franc again. And right there, there we go. So at the same time, I see strength in all the other currencies. So obviously the pairs are doing fine. There was another bond auction last night. I guess that's the best way to describe it, a bond auction. And it just kind of gave energy to, uh, I guess, the, you know, bondholders. They were all excited that, you know, life is good. You know, and interest rates have dropped a little bit more, so forth and so on. Let's see what it's all about. There we are. And so... Uh, you know, here we are this morning. You can see some strength coming into the Swiss, which means there's buying in the dollar. Or I guess you could not call it strength in the Swiss, weakness in the Swiss. Remember, when the Swiss is going down, it's making, you know, it's it's uh, gaining in value here. You know, it's going down, it's gaining in value. Oh, it's hidden behind the, uh, let's change that so you can see it on the Chicago Quant versus uh, the previous one. So, yeah, when it's going down like that, it is meaning that uh, there is less Swiss takes less Swiss to buy a dollar and vice versa. When it rises, it takes more Swiss. So obviously you would rather be able to buy more than less with the same uh, currency. All right, uh, let's take a look at the Euro this morning. There's the Euro. You see, this is still perking along very well. Strength, we've been in a daily buy for those that might be new here. This is the, uh, oh, I haven't even tuned in. Check out the, uh, let me go to the, to, to the uh, website itself myself. Where's that mouse at? There it is. These Mises two pieces. There we are. Let me give it a refresh, and I'll be able to hear how my voice is going, too, at the same time to make sure everybody can hear me. There we go. It seems like a quiet morning. Not many people up there at the moment. There we go. Oh, yeah. I see myself. Excellent. 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 And I hear myself five by five. Lovely. All right. So you can see here... On the euro, the euro is moving up, and it doesn't seem to want to let go. We've gone into the weekly buy down here on the weekly quant right here on the bottom. You see that we went to the, uh, down here, that line represents, well, actually, we've got to fix that line a little bit, make it solid. Uh, it represents that it's in a weekly trend on the upside. At the same time, we've been in a daily trend since here. So all guns are blazing to the upside. It says be long or be wrong. All right, and then looking at Mr. and Mrs. Cable, you can see the cable is trying to do the same thing. It jumped into the buy there yesterday. Let's put a little line in there. Now we just need the weekly to turn up. It needs to break the zero line here. Let's emphasize that with a line down the center, like so. I hope Daniel comes in. They missed the 14,000 by like seven points yesterday. And I kept on thinking, oh my goodness, where do we have the webinar today? And today you can see We'll jump over that when Daniel shows up, that uh, we are through the 14,000. He was saying 14,000 by the end of the month, and I was saying 14 by the end of the month. It's more likely by the end of the day. And sure enough, uh, it was there by the, by uh, in, in U.S. hours. By the end of the day, it had gotten to 1,393, and in, uh, going into the, the evening hours yesterday, it was already uh, blowing through. There she blows like the great white whale. Yes, indeed he did. So, that's how that all played out in the end. It was funny. Anyway, that's the way we are around here. We are live and dynamic. And uh, that is the, the whole gist of it all in the end. There we go. All right, now let's take a look at, uh, you can see strength in these pairs, except for the Swiss, was Swiss which is kind of interesting. Let's jump over to the Turkish Lira. You can see Turkish Lira fell into a cell a couple days ago right there. I guess the line should be down here at the bottom. We'll do that. And it's heading, you know, we saw that gave us a, a little nervous point there on uh, Monday. where We were looking for this action up in here on the Turkish Lira, thinking that it was going to go after this line. And instead, uh, what's happening is that, look at that, 
Monday action. That's the start of the week here with our weekly quant. It's bad enough that it's already four weeks in a cell, but at the same time, uh, they're really pressing it down now. So there's pressure on this uh, Turkish lira. Uh, whatever's going on with the new central banker that's there, uh, obviously something is cooking, and we're going to just learn and follow the math and see how she goes. At this point, it's saying to be short now. And this is so rare for us to have it so wrong on our math. But that's the 8.5 out of 10 accuracy rate we carry for the last uh, 43 years. It happens once in a while. I guess it has to be something. After a fantastic um, watch of the Turkish Lira where we were bullish on this thing for over 57 weeks. Uh, let's see, where's that at? That's July of uh, 2019. I think we went into a buy. Where was it? Let's see if we can find it here. We went into the buy right there where that line is in in the end of December of 2020. Was that what it was? Yeah, I guess that's what it was. Or the beginning. No, I'm sorry. To, yes. No, that would make no sense because we went 52 weeks. Yeah, I guess so. That's that's 2019. That must be. So let's go back and look at that. There's December of 221. Right. Okay, that makes sense. And so at the beginning of last year, not this year, actually. We went into the buy in 2019, and we didn't fall out of that buy signal, which is so unreal, uh, all the way up until December of this uh, 2020, 50 plus weeks. I guess it was like 54 or 55 weeks, which was phenomenal. So I guess uh, we have a little leeway in the fact that this crazy political situation here has not been recouped. And so we'll see. And if this thing stays in the cell, in a weekly cell, and it goes down and makes all this back, it made half of it back on this move right here, which we were expecting. But we expected it to go all the way up to this dotted line. So we're we're watching this Turkish lira to see if it's going to, uh, well, we'll see when it makes its money back. It always does. That's the way the math works. It's a consistency. My math always does that. It always makes it back. And then takes the lead and always is profitable in the end. So that's how it all works out. All right, now we'll zip over to the Canadian. You can see here the Canadian's kind of zippy here and zippy there, but overall it's been in the short on the weekly trend since right here. And you can see that pressure there. And uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Hey, George, how are you doing this morning? I see the silver quant daily went. You know, it. It, yeah, let's go back to that because I want to talk about that. Let's just jump right over to silver. Last night, we had a daily buy in that thing. Let me show you. I mean, where is that at? Let's go find the chart from last night. I'll find it in a second. Um, go to there. Go to there. I'm going to go to the sense of last night. Yeah, I, that drives me crazy when that happens. And then somewhere over the night, data came in. Let's see, see. Silver... And download. Okay. Here we go. We're going to show you what we sent out yesterday afternoon. Here it comes. Yeah, right there. See that? That was yesterday. Made all the sense in the world. See the body of this thing? You know, there's the opening there. There's the low. There's the uh, close. You know, our math is screaming. It's going to go up. We're in a weekly buy. Okay, you see all that, right? Now let's minimize that for a second. And take a look at silver right now. Where did the body go? How did they remove that? Now the opening is, uh, what is that? It's like 70 cents higher. Where's the rest of that body? It's gone. You know, I mean, it, you know, I, I don't understand how they pulled that data out of this system. I don't have any control over it. It's not like I can change the uh, open, high, low, and close myself. Uh, on this uh, particular uh, software, I I don't have that ability, so I don't even get near it, or I don't even I don't even have the interest to do it to begin with. I've got other things to do. Yeah, look at that, that's insane. Luckily, it's in a weekly buy right here. You can see it whoop, right there. You can see it's in a weekly buy, so you know not to go short. You know, in other words, you're not short here. You're definitely not short. You're just not long. That's all, and that's the rules of the game here with Doc's mathematics. You're long here. And when it goes into the weekly buy, you're allowed to get long here. And the moment it goes into the sell, you're 
not short, you're just not long anymore. Remember, you can't go short because we're in a weekly buy. And then it does this jump up, so you shouldn't be short. If anybody was short, they're not paying attention to us as we speak. Let's see. Who's that? Uh, let's see. Man, hello, Doc. I am from Germany. Ah, well, hello to you. Uh, and trade mostly euro dollar. What do you think? Where, where will it go? Well, you know, normally what we do is we, let's go over to the euro dollar. But yeah, see that, uh, George? That drives me crazy when they do that. And you know what? They did it in the back month. Let me just show you that. And then I'm going to answer uh, uh, our friend from Germany. Check out this. Here is the July, which is really sloppy to begin with. We have we have a client that likes watching it. But look at this. It's the same thing. They pulled the, they pulled that out too. They pulled out the whole body, and they stuck this little thing in there. I don't know what that's all about. Not a guess. All right, now let's go back to the to the uh, what I like to call the Deutschmark slash Euro. I used to trade Deutschmarks when I was young. Uh, man's I used to do that all the time. So there's the there's the euro. You can see here we've been in a weekly buy, just coming into this week here. Been in a daily buy for days. Right now it looks like there's a lot of strength. We're thinking, see this dotted line up in there? We're thinking, uh, you know, that's the highs of here. Maybe it'll go after it since we're in a weekly buy. As long as we're in a weekly buy, it has a shot to go there. The moment it falls into a daily sell, uh, you know, it could be a correction, a small one where they support this. Oop. They support this area here. I'll draw it. They may come down to support that area there. And as long as we stay in a weekly buy, we just assume it's just going up. Now, where it can land is very hard to say. Uh, thanks for explaining it to me, Doc. Oh, no problem. And we, you know, and what I do is sometimes I will write it on the chart when I really get angry. I'll write it on the chart and send it out to everybody that this is insane where they move the data around. 47, how you doing? Euro yen. Uh -huh. All right, let's check out the euro yen. I see euro yen. Euro yen. It's around here somewhere. I know there's euro Swiss. There's euro New Zealand. Hmm. I thought we had euro yen in there. Let me uh. Let me put Euro Yen in there. Where do we put it today? That's it. So we're looking at Euro Aussie. There's Euro. Let's see. Let me see. Where should we put it? Let's see if we can find a spot for it. There's Euro GBP. We watch that every day. Uh, there's Euro Zulti. We we watch that all, all every day. So let's slide it into Euro New Zealand. <laughs> all right. I love doing this. I like, you know, like fresh charts type of thing. Everybody can see it all at once with me live. It's the scientist in me. I love doing the research right in front of everybody. In this case here, we're looking at, this is like the old Al Einstein thing. We're looking at moving bodies on a electric, electric, electromagnetic field. That's, how, that's what we're really doing here. And we just, uh, you know, it just happens to be currencies or stocks or indexes. But we do it with isotopes. I do it with expanding galaxies. I do it with everything. I do it with all kinds of scientific things. Doc's, doc is, uh, math is universal. I've back tested it millions and millions and millions of years using Lisa Randall's work out of Harvard. Uh, so it's not like I'm inventing something and then saying, oh, gee, see, look at it works real well. All right, here we go. Now, that's interesting right there. <laughs> They're reversed. Let's move that over. This would be cute. So it goes into the cell there. And it's also in a weekly buy here. Let's see if we can find a uh, buy signal somewhere around here. There's one. Let's steal that. And we'll move it all the way up to here. And we'll take the cell, too. We'll do the same thing. Move that up to there, and now let's scroll back over like so. All right, so the cell went there into the cell. Then it came out of it, went into the buy here. And then let's uh, move some of these things over, and we'll refill it. Oh, that's good there. So we can leave that. 
we can move this there. That's the buy. Uh, that's a buy there. That's cool. That's a sell there. That's cool. Uh, what is that? That is a buy right there. That was cool. Let's see. What is that? That is not. Is that it? One, two, three. Oh, yeah, that's a buy. Okay, so let's move that over. So that was a buy there. And then it went into the sell. Let's see. Where else are we? Now, that's not a sell. And that's not a sell. Is that the sell? No, that's not a sell. Okay, so we'll move that over. Let's see. There's a buy right there. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's back one. It's right there. Right there. That one right there. With the red dot is a sell. So let's take this and move that over. And then let's take that buy here and move that there. So at the beginning of, let's move these back like that. And we'll take that cell. That cell went into a cell here. Then we went into the weekly cell. It still went down. That was a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And then we see it here. Nothing yet. Right there is the buy. So you're not short anymore, but you, you can't be long because we're in a weekly cell. See that, traders? Then... Let's see, when does it go into the weekly buy? Is it there or the next one? Let's see. We'll see in a second by looking at the math. Right there. Okay, so that's a minus. See, plot one is minus 0 0.02. 0 0.02. And uh, this looks like a 3. Let's see what it's doing. I think it's just measuring the 3s and not using the 5. Yeah, see, 5 is invisible. Okay, so we're just using the 3 out of this to begin with. So it goes into the weekly buy here. So now you can be long on all the longs, but you can't be short on any of the shorts. Let's move this one over. I think that's a short there, right? No, that's not a short. That's not a short. That's not a short. Okay, so this buy here never happened because it's been part of this buy from the original. So then it goes into a cell. Let's move this cell over. Then it goes into a cell there. And then right back into the buy. That's a fail. There's a loss. So this was a win. This was a win. Nice wins. Uh, that couldn't go into the cell because it was a red green. It has to be just a red. And then, uh, let's see, where is it? So let me think. Then it goes into the cell here. It goes back into the buy there. It's a small little win there. And then it goes into a cell here. You can't take the cell, of course. And it goes back into a buy again. Another winner, winner, chicken dinner. It goes into the cell here. You miss that whole sell off. You don't have to get in trouble there. That's nice. And now it's been in a long since there. Look at that. Let's widen this up a little bit for you so you have a better visual. There we go. So it's been in a long. It won't go into a cell at the moment. It's been in a long since here, which is interesting. How's that, 47? Uh, hey, Stefano. How you doing? And, mans, did we answer your question? For stain, yeah. You for stain, melons. Sprechen Sie English? So there it is. That's the uh, euro yen. That's fun. And obviously the euro dollar. You got that flavor with the euro dollar. No problem. And let's see. Now Stefano is saying gold. Let's tune into the gold. Gold, like in, what's his name? Something Powers. Gold. Let's find gold. There it is right there. Gold. See that? There's gold. You can see uh, that did not do what the crazy silver did. I don't know. They've got to clean that silver up. That's crazy. Look at that. They've removed like two-thirds of the price out of the bar. That's insane. Um... Let's see. Let's go back to the gold. There it is right there. Uh, it's playing with the weekly buy. Pretty impressive. Um, you know, today they're going to float a Bitcoin. Inglit. <laughs> no, I was talking to Mans. Uh, not you, Martini. I was talking to Mans over in uh, Germany. He was asking about the euro, and I didn't see a response back just to make sure he understood what we were looking for. Uh, I would say that 
you know, I've been saying to Robin, uh, we've been talking about this. We keep on thinking him and I that uh, that pretty much the money, the speculative money that trades in the, in the metals market has probably drifted over to the cryptos. That's the way I see it. Uh, you know, I mean, cryptos are doing what people expect. They're going up in value, and and uh, you know, and that's that's important. You know, I mean, I, I mean, the, the metals traders for years now are frustrated. They're not seeing uh, anything that they uh, you know uh, were hoping for. You know what I mean? They you know they they expect uh, they expect uh, you know you know when calamity occurs they expect gold to go up, not go down. And same thing with uh, silver. They expect to see, you know, much more and better options and activity. And they really don't, you know. So, you know, that's that's probably the uh, disappointment of the metals traders for decades. Is that when you see, I, I can tell you this, in 1987, a lot of you are, are uh, you know, very young and so 1987, some of you may have not even been born and uh, listening to this broadcast. And I remember, you know, Robin and I are both members at the Chicago Mercantile where they trade the S&P 500. And I remember standing in that pit and looking at gold and it's up $50 and the stock market is down like, you know, historical numbers. And the world's going to hell in a handbasket on the trading floors. But outside... You know, I remember saying to some young traders, I used to say, well, I was young then. You know, I was saying to other traders, I was saying, you know, you know, look at the banks over there. There's, you know, we're looking out the windows and going, look at the banks. There's not a line in front of them. You know, cars are driving around. People are functioning normal. You know, it's just the markets being the markets. It's got nothing to do like 1929. It's not going to wreck our society. And uh, and I think that's the probably the best way to describe what's going on now is that, you uh, the financial markets are way independent of the norm. So the metals traders, you know, I'm watching gold trading at 50. You would have thought it would have been trading at $500 up an ounce, not 50. And if you if you had said to me in 2007, what do you think, you know, if you had told me what type of thing the Fe Federal Reserve would be doing by the end of 2008 or 2007, going into, two, or was it 2009, I guess, 2009 in 2008, if, if you would have told me, that the Federal Reserve is doing all this, and you would have said, okay, Doc, where do you think, you know, gold will be when the Federal Reserve and the central banks across the planet are doing all that stuff? I would have said, you know, 5000 6000 an ounce, you know, I, for gold. I would have thought that, you know. I mean, it, it seemed to be logical. I mean, gold back then was worth, you know, I don't know, what, twelve, fourteen hundred bucks, something like that. You know, I mean, you know, if you would have told me that the central banks – would have taken over all of world markets. I would have thought that the the gold bugs would have pushed that thing all the way up to say five thousand. I've said sometimes, I've, if someone had said ten thousand, I would have said, yeah, ten thousand sounds about right. It could be like a T note, you know, T bill. You know, T bills are traded in that ten thousand dollar increments, and I would have been like, you know, uh, well, I think you can buy them in thousand dollar increments, but usually you buy ten thousand dollars worth, and so. Um, you know, I would have been like, yeah, 10000 is not outlandish. It's just to be overvalued, I would say, gold is. Well, gold is at best is gets up into the $2,000 range and it dies. You know, so, I mean, today they're going to float a fund with the Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, and I think that a lot of the speculative money is just not here anymore in the metals market. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, it seems to make sense to me. Um I have a hard time believing that speculative money even remotely gets near it anymore. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I do. For Stain. The Corona. Yeah, especially those crazy lockdowns you guys are having in uh, G Germany, you know? Hey, Andy, how you doing? Yeah, did you see that? I sent one over to you. Oh. That's a compliment. Oh, okay. Thank you, Andy. You know, we, you know, a, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, you know, a, uh, a blind squirrel will find a nut and Doc will be right every so often. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah, um, there's some interesting things going on with that group in the Arc Arc Archicus. Arc Arc Egous. You know, however you want to describe that. Uh has that young tiger in it. He's not that young anymore. I think he's in his fifties. So uh um you know, I I think that you know, there's no doubt that there is so much money trying to find places to invest. You know, that it, that it's, uh, you know, they're running around in every direction. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to change some rules about these snaps or what she's doing. But, let's see, Stefano says gold has also a lot a lot of uses in the industry. True. No doubt about it. Especially silver does, you know, for computers and all. So, I think that after pandemic, economy will be up and gold too. You know, I would hope, I would hope, you know, uh, I see, I see at this point in time why we focus in on it during a, a 4X webinar is that um, they use other products for surrogates for the dollar. Now, what that means basically is instead of going short or long dollar at a given time, instead they, they buy or sell other products like gold, silver, soybeans, corn, anything oil, anything traded in dollars, and they want to be long dollars, they'll buy the product, and then they can put a synthetic position on with uh, option derivatives uh, to adjust for the uh, commodity itself. Yo, Daniel, see what I mean yesterday? 1400 It made it there on yesterday, and today it is rocking. Let's see. Let's go find it. The NQs. I mean, you know, uh, the NASDAQ. Let's see. There it is right there. You know, it's trading at the high today is uh, now 1429. Uh, let me open down here. I want to see. Okay, here it is right here. We can bring one of these up also at the same time. There we go. Let's see. Did they did they get it in there? You know what? They didn't. They didn't get it in there last night. I thought they did, and they and they did it going into the European hours. But yeah, you know, the the uh, there's nowhere else to go. You know, you know, traders. There really isn't. I mean, you have almost 18 trillion, not billion, not million, but with a t t t t trillion uh, assets tied up in zero return or minus return so in other words they're invested in bonds and so forth and warrants that that pay nothing you know they pay nothing matter of fact sometimes you have to pay them to own a bond so you buy the bond and then you got to pay them interest to own the bond instead of you getting the interest so you know in a world like that you know, there's gonna they're gonna be going after all kinds of stuff. You know, I mean, they're gonna be buying into all kinds of products. So that's uh, that's really the gist of it all. You know what I mean? That really is. It's a uh, fun times, you know. And uh, and you know, you know, remember I was a when I was young, I was a young guy. I was a kid in the financial markets. I was a member on the trading floors. You know, like Robin, we were young, and uh, we were as old as you guys are now, probably. And, uh, you know, the things that are going on today are beyond anything anybody would accept. It's not that we couldn't imagine it. We, we, we didn't think the world could accept it, you know, it, it was it, because it's so financially wrong what they're doing. They're breaking the norms of 5,000 years of investing. And so, you know, it... it it, it's real disturbing to see what goes on. And, and, and you got to imagine, I hear from a lot of the old guys, you know, I mean, they're in their 80s and their 90s. And they, I'm the kid still. They still talk to me like I'm a kid. And uh, and I'm in the 60s. And, uh, and it's funny, you know. I mean, it, it's funny that uh, what we're seeing in the trading markets, they're, they're weird, the trading markets. Weird in a unconventional way. Let's see, Daniel says... Uh, Forex is one of the least profitable markets. It is the market that requires lots of leverage to make some profit. Stocks and stock indexes are better. Yeah, I hear I hear that. But you know what I find about currencies? Currencies have a better momentum. 
So in other words, if you notice, a lot of times when we have a product go into a buy, it stays there for a while. When it goes into a sell, it stays there for a while. You know, it it has better momentum characteristics, uh, currencies. Uh, at least I think they do, you know, throughout the years trading them. And I've been trading currencies since uh, for over 40 years. Yeah, Doc's been trading currencies, you know, for 40 plus years. So, let's see, uh, stocks are the best, stocks index is second best. Let's see, stock indexes are second best, then there are the commodities, and a forex almost equal to footing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable with the continuity, you know, the consistency of forex. I do find forex to have consistency. The problem is that you have to measure very carefully how much you're going to be long or short at a given time. You don't want to get priced out of the market. You don't want to get stopped out. And I can't tell you how many times people say to me in this webinar, oh, I was long and I got stopped out. And then if I just, you know, didn't have that size of position, I would have, I would have stayed in. And now look at it. It's where I thought it was going. And that's, that is truly one of the characteristics about, uh, you know, about the, the, the uh, currency market. It does have a consistency. I mean, like here, look at the distance between here to there and here to there and then here to there and there and then, you know, there again long. I mean, you get this little choppiness as it's getting ready to make a major shift. You know, here it's trying to bounce. We're in a weekly sell from there. This is the A. This is the B. And now we're getting ready to do the, the you know, the, the, the nasty, do the C on the downside. And then, it, you know, it goes sell. Then they come in and buy again. It doesn't work well. Fails. We can't take the long because we're in a weekly sell right here. So all we can do is watch that move. Then we get into a sell the next day, and then it falls apart. We're in a sell now. What is that? For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine days in a sell. It falls from 119, 159. Or I'm sorry, 119.15, say 16, we'll round it out. 119.16, all the way down to a low of 117.31, no, 117.04, right? See that nice consistency, and then look, look at it here. It goes into the daily buy, gives us a warning, we're going to get into that weekly buy, it gets into the weekly buy, and look where the daily, the daily went into a buy at 118.12. Right now, it's still in that daily buy, and it's trading at 119.74. See that nice, smooth consistency, you know? Now, sugar, corn, wheat uh, looked bullish. Yeah, but let me, let's take a look at We do watch, uh, we don't do the sugar, but we watch the, and I think we can do sugar in a, I think we can get sugar on an ETF, but let's take a look at uh, corn and wheat. Let's open that up. Open sesame. Yes, indeed, indeed. All right, so here comes the um, here comes the uh, the corn. Okay, so there's corn, and uh, you can see here we went into now that's doing that stupid thing. They've pulled something out of it, but it, you know it's we have that in the buy there. We're going to leave it like that. We're in a weekly buy. And, you know, here you are live today. You know, it's 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 jacked itself from a close yesterday. Let's refresh this, too. So it closed yesterday at, uh, what is that, 66.50. All right, so 566.50, and it's trading right now at 576.25. So it's up 10 points. That's pretty good in that product. Yeah, now we've been in a daily buy on the Tesla, and we've been through the weekly buy for for all week long. Here, let's go take a look at that. We'll close this. Oh, and let's take a look at wheat, since you mentioned it. There's the wheat. Wheat's the same way. It's battling to get into... Is that wheat? Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's May wheat. May wheat's been in a daily buy since here. You know, spiked up the next day. And then this week, it's been climbing ever since after... It, did a crazy little sell-off on Monday, and you can see we are in the weekly buy all week long, and you can see it's battling to confirm it and stay. 
All right, let's close that. Now let's go take a look at Mr. and Mrs. Tesla. Open, bing, a bink, a bink, a bink, a bink, a bink, a bink. There we go. See that? There you go. Tesla's been in daily buy for three solid days now. Uh, this is the third day. And uh, let's see. From the 1702 area, basically, was that 1701.98? So say 1702. And we've been in a weekly buy all week long. And let's take a. Where's it trading at? at in the pre market, it is trading at 777. So it's at up $75 for the three days. So, yeah, you know. Want to see Apple? Look at Apple. Apple's doing the same thing. We closed in a weekly buy last week. And we've been in a daily buy since, like, here. There it is right there. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This will be the eighth day. And it's gone from, what is that? Come on. Wait, I, there it is. So it closed at 125.90. And where is it trading now? 134.74. So it's almost $10. It's $9 and change. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool, huh? Is that right? 125. 125.90. So that's 126. 126. All right. So it's like eight, eight dollars. Almost nine dollars. That's what it is. It's nine dollars, not ten dollars. So that's a great move too, you know. See, Daniel says Tesla best stock performance since yesterday with market cap over half a half a billion. I think I will be up ten percent. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it's up seventy five dollars at the moment. Now let's go over to the currencies again, unless someone wants to see something. Let's see what the ruble's doing. I wish Mr. Biden would leave, you know, Russia and the Ukraine alone. Uh, if it wasn't for those crazy Democrats here in the United States, Mr. Mr. Obama and Mrs. Clinton tried to overthrow the Russian Federation and Mr. Putin. So, I mean, if they would just leave them alone, maybe they would be more hospitable to their neighbors. Now let's go over and take a look at the ruble. And there's the ruble right there. Uh, moving down. And, you know, he's basically <coughs> called Mr. Biden and said, look, you know, you got to clean your stuff up. You know, you're a crazy boy. Daniel says, Apple, second best performer besides Tesla on stocks with over half a, half a billion market cap in the last three days. Yeah, CR math caught both of them very well. And then we take a look at the yen, not the euro yen, but the dollar yen. You can see this thing's been a daily sell. See the distance between some of those signals? Uh, like right there, there's one, there's a buy there, there's a sell. You know, there's some consistency, three, four, five, six, seven days. There's the buy there, and yeah, catch that whole ride right there. Uh, there's the buy there, you catch that nice ride right there, just from there to there. What a nice ride that is. It's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Same thing here. You know, you get the buy here, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one here, a little poor, you know, nothing fantastic. Uh, you probably make or lose a little bit. And then right there, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that half a trillion market cap is something, isn't it? It's a nice dividing line. All right, what else do we got brewing around here? So, that is what it is. Uh, let's see, we did the yen. Where else are we now? Let's go take a look at, or in the currency, so let's take a look at, oh, we started looking at the Canadian, didn't we? We kind of rolled over. So there's the Canadian. It's trying to get into a daily buy right here. We're flirting with the weekly buy. You know, we've been in a weekly sell since this spot here. You can see it's been, you know, 
a downward trend, but mainly more of a sideways trend, just making lower lows. And then we started making higher lows. Now we're making an attempt to make a higher high. So that's going to be interesting to see how they play this out. It is early in the week still. This, isn't today hump day? Is today Wednesday? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, today's hump day. So it's Wednesday, Wednesday, middle of the week. So we'll see if it holds up or rolls over. And then uh, where else do we go normally? We'll go take a look at the Mexican peso. There's the dollar peso. See another one. See what I mean, Daniel? Look at the consistency. You know, we're in a weekly buy here. This one, fair. You know, it's just like a chicken wing. Then you get this one. And you get the whole chicken. Big win. Then it gives you the warning here. You know, don't be long or you'll be wrong. And it goes down and it goes into a buy here. And it's a, you got a drumstick and uh, a wing or something like that. Make a little money again. Then it tells you right here, we go into a weekly cell. See that right there? We go into the cell. And it's been in the cell all the way to, did we go into the buy? We didn't get to the buy yet. We're still in a cell. So that's two. That's four. That's, uh, let's see. See if I can count past four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Going on 13 days since up here in the 2050 ish area. Uh, we're trading down to the 2010 area or almost touching the 20 even area. So you see that that Momo, as we like to call it in, uh, in the trading market, the momentum. Momo. See that nice, slow, steady consistency. Oh, let's see what Daniel says here. Uh, check Nas dollar. Looks like it made a nice move today. I think it's in a daily buy too, isn't it? Over on the fact check spreadsheet, right there. Yeah, uh, no, it's in a weekly sell. Yeah, it's two days in a daily buy, so it's trying to turn up. Let's check that out. And let's see what it's doing in the daily. Do, 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 right there. And at the same time, we're trying to climb up into the weekly buy. We've been in a daily buy since here. So this is going on a third day. Went into the buy right there. And so it's moving along smoothly, and it got very close to the sell there. Notice it's Z point, Z, 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 one, zero. Remember, Doc wrote this mathematics to deal with the Higgs boson back in 77. So my formula here of... Uh, following objects on a field instead of like Al Einstein's following a uh, moving body on a electromagnetic field. Doc likes to call it following a body on a uh, on a surface. That's what I called it back in 77. I was trying to advance the concept of relativity uh, looking uh, that way, you know. But then now in later years, I found out what the relativity side of it is. And uh, for those that are wondering what Doc is talking about, uh, let's see if I can find that. Let's see if I can find that. We can get a little crazy here, I think. Where is it at? It's here somewhere. There it is. This is, uh, this is what relativity really means right there that's what relativity is so what they did is that the in germany when they brought him in uh after 1905 and they they changed his paper's name see his original paper is uh, electro the the moving bodies on an electromagnetic field that's what the relativity paper's title is really and so then he kind of moved in with this young woman and her, her mother and then he married her mother but She's not exactly a child anymore. And you see the relationship they have in the later years. So I think they were making a joke about relative. I think they were talking about like relatives, like family members. I think that because that's her, that is his third cousin. They all live together. So Al Einstein left his wife and his children. And he moved in with his second cousin and his third cousin and married the second cousin. And you can see the relationship that the third cousin has with him, her daughter. Obviously, it's very congenial <laughs> so that's why it's called relative it's got nothing to do with math it's got more to do with uh, his uh, personal relationships 
So that is that. <laughs> so anyway, Doc tried to advance that concept minus the uh, dealing with, you know, dating my cousins. And uh, that's where we come up with it right there. Let's see what Daniel says here now. So Daniel is saying now uh, half a trillion market cap. Uh, let's see. NASCAD. Okay. Oh, no. NAS dollar. We looked at that. Daniel says uh, dollar shorts. Uh, let's see. Dollar shorts. NAS dollar long AUD long euro long 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 oh and uh, in short uh the uh, scandies okay and bitcoin ethereum yeah i'll tell you uh it's going to be very very cool i can't wait to see this thing matter of fact we're going to have charts on it as they evolve it we're going to watch that and watch it trade it's going to be a very active product it, you know because i find the futures contract to be very uncomfortable uh, you know, it's got too wide a market. Uh, you know, it, it can go up or down a thousand points or 500 points in a, just a couple of minutes. And you got like a $50 wide bid and offer. I mean, you, you take two offers. The next thing you know, it's up $200. It's like, what? It's not very liquid. But the new product that's going to be floated today could be very, very liquid. It'd be very interesting. Duke Escopi has one here, too. They have a, a, a Bitcoin product that you can trade. Probably in a much more responsible way too. Uh, the 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 future on the on the futures exchange is very very aggressive. Makes it hard, you know. So let's see. Yeah, let's see that right there. There you go. Two hundred and seventy-five dollar bid. You take the offer. You're paying uh, what is that? You're paying fifty or sixty dollars more. Boom. Let's say you made a mistake. You accidentally bought when you meant to sell. Now you got to take a fifty or sixty dollar loss. See that it's. It's about fifty dollars wide constantly. It's not. It's not a very liquid product. It's very tough. Look at that. Look at that. Forty-three offer. Eighteen offer. Twenty-one offer. Thirty-one offer. I mean, it jumps in the tens. Seven. There's a seven-dollar move. Now there was a fifteen-dollar change. Now there was a twelve-dollar. Now there's a ten-dollar. Now there's a five-dollar. There's a three-dollar. Now there's a fourteen-dollar move just on the offer. Now looking at the bid offer, it's constantly fifty dollars wide. That tells you. That it's very illiquid. It's not that Duke Escopi is doing something wrong. It's that the market is illiquid. Brokers can only make a market in something. All right, let's see how, how do I phrase this better? Brokers can only make a market to the liquidity of a product. So, you know, if you see Duke Escopi being $50 wide, it, it's not Duke Escopi who's doing that. It's the market that's doing that. And so if they're going to buy and sell it for you and they're putting it up on their, you know, their platform, uh, it's got nothing to do with them being like, oh, they're greedy or they're, they're sloppy. It's got nothing to do with that. I hate it when people say to me, oh, I don't like them. It's like, why don't you like them? They're, they're fine. Duke Escopi is a fine brokerage operation. It's no worse or better than any of the others out there. It's all the same. It's homogenized. So, you know, why, matter of fact, they let Doc ramble all day long, or they, they let Doc ramble every day for an hour. So, hell, they're one of the best out there as far as I'm concerned. And so, you know, you cannot, you can't trade a product like this. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's just, you know, imagine if you tried to go buy two or three of these things, and you buy one, they sell you, like, you know, they sell you one, then you got to pay another $25 to get the next one. Look at the way it moves. I mean, it's just moving, you know, all over the place. So don't blame Duke Escopi for this. Blame a e-liquid market. And that's that's important for traders to see that. Don't trade in e-liquid markets. But this new product that's going to be floated today in the States here is going to be very liquid. It's going to be really fun. Say, okay, okay, cryptos. Daniel says, <laughs> Andy's laughing. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you let's see oh uh let's see daniel says crypto exchanges the spread can be as low as a dollar for both bitcoin and ethereum oh yeah well then oh you mean in the in the actual physical market itself but are you really buying sixty four thousand dollars worth or are you buying like five dollars worth you know you see what i'm saying you know when you try to step up and buy the sixty four thousand dollar coin what's the bid and offer to it you know, Daniel, is it really a dollar wide? I doubt it. 
Have you ever tried buying, uh, or not buying, but do you see $64,000 coin offered a dollar wide? That's hard to believe. Now, Ethereum is what? A couple thousand dollars, right? So I imagine Ethereum has got to be just as percentage-wise the same way. When you buy a full Ethereum, I'm sure it's probably like five, ten dollars wide, something like that. Probably like three or four, three to five dollars wide. Somewhere's around there, maybe six dollars wide, something like that. You know, it all comes down to the liquidity of the marketplace itself. Does that make sense, Daniel? Let's see what Daniel says. But anyway, that's where we are, traders. Okay, where uh, we, we leave off. Oh, you know what we didn't do is, uh, I wanted to show you, they did the same thing in natural gas on us too. It really disappointed me. Check this out. Natural gas, where is natural gas? There it is, natural gas right there. Was it natural gas? No, maybe it wasn't natural gas. Maybe I, I was just, oh, I know what it was. It was a crude oil. Did they do the same thing to me on crude oil? I think they did. I think up on our fact check spreadsheet, we have crude oil in a buy for three days and they've jerked it around to doing the same thing, changing things where the openings are and the highs and all like that. It's very irritating when they do that. Very irritating. You know, it really is. Uh, luckily, it's in a weekly sell, so none of our traders here should be long that product whatsoever on that buy signal. Uh, unfortunately, they could be short from right here, which is uh, 60 uh, was that 5975 and it right now it's trading at 61 and change so without a doubt money management is important especially when they keep on changing the high and the lows and the openings and the closes they keep on moving these things around on us all right uh, let let me see now where are sorry Yes, indeed. All right, let's jump over to, where else is there in this? Oh, yes, let's, we looked at the metals. No, we haven't looked at, yeah, we've looked at, that was the energies. That's what it was. We looked at the energies, and we've looked at the metals. And now we'll take a look at the stock indices to finish this up. And we can look at any currency you would like. If you want me to stop, I will jump back to... Whatever currency you say, hey, I want to see this, Doc. Let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ethereum, the spread is $2,587.88. That's very impressive. Now, what about the uh, Bitcoin? What are they quoting that at? 64000 something that's 64000 something? I would expect that this to be like 3 to $5 wide. That's pretty good. Two dollar wide spread. That's pretty good. And dollar wide spread. That's really good. So that's much more liquid. Now I think Wilco is saying to me that they're really hepped up on the blockchain uh, or the encryption uh, structure, or in the encryption uh, you know technology at Ethereum, which is really you know the cat's meow, as they would say back in 1920. The cat's meow. Like wearing a raccoon coat. All right, now let's jump over to the stock indices. See what they're doing here. Now there's the uh, the NQ, the Nasdaq 100, or over in Dukascopy, it's referred to as the uh, Tech 100, right there. And you can see here on uh, our Chicago Quant website we've got this going on right there looking very 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 firm and uh, then we look at the S&P 500 right there same situation kind of flat I guess they're flattening out a little bit is that possible I guess that's what it is let's see where they at right now is that it yeah okay so yeah look at that okay so let's just bring this up for the fun of yes right there and there's the Nasdaq uh, 100 and it, its top now is uh, what's that 29 1429 14,000 029ers and you can see our work you know this is an intraday trading Oop. 
This is not a daily. This is intraday trading that I trade off of. So you can see it goes into the sell and it goes down. See, it has that consistency. Goes into a little buy there. It pops up for a little bit. Goes back into a sell. We get short again. You can see the volatility warning there like you see the volatility warning here. And you can see now they're trying to dig their heels in and try to hold up a little strength in there. Oop. One of these things will do it. There we go. So now let's move back to uh, where are we going to go to. We'll go and take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is actually flirting with a weekly sell. Hey, Robin, if you're listening, maybe we can get a short into that today. That would be nice, you know. But unfortunately, we're in a weekly buy, so it's really tough. But at least the green line has broken the, the plus nonlinear time, uh, time uh, manifold line, the time uh, manifold right there. So that's that's a good thing. So it's it's trying to set up in there. Hang Sang looks to do a, a breakout. You know, I, which one was it yesterday, uh, this last night? I think Nikkei, right? Nikkei got whacked. Not whacked. Down 133 points. That's nothing. It's a 29,000. But yeah, I saw that. I, I saw that. And let's see. Let's see what the Nikkei. What was it? You're saying the Hang Sang, right? Is that A or B? Let me take a look at that. Oh, wait a minute. Hang Sang. No, I'm thinking of Shanghai, not Hang Sang. I'm looking at the. I'm thinking of Shanghai. Sorry about that. That's the A and the B. And let me just go in and take a look at the markets there. That's not it. FTSE, this and that, and the other thing. Uh, let's see where is it at? I just saw it where I was. I was. I saw the, the. Um, where is it? Not? I'm not seeing it now. Here it is. There. Okay, there it is. The Hang Sang. Yeah, up 403 points. And the Nikkei uh, down 130. And I guess that's the Singapore Strait Times was down 8.5. And, and the Shanghai was up, I think it's A. Shanghai A was up $20. So um, that's Hong Kong, right? The Hang Sang, which is dollar related. It, it could be as much as just currency translation in other words you're trying to get long dollars you buy hang sang in your long dollars i heard that uh what was it uh what's uh, alibaba that's what it is b-a-b-a -B -A. they um i don't know where uh the fellow is we talked about that he uh, i was talking with somebody yesterday about that in this webinar he's disappeared for a couple of years or like nine months or six months they think the chinese have him locked up may is it yeah, nice fellow. And uh, he was a school teacher, and he started the, the uh, online business. And uh, they, I understand that they have agreed to something with the government. So maybe that's part of the effect that you're seeing in the Hang Sang. Yeah, it's on Dukascopy. Let's take a look at that. Let's go over to the J4X. Thank you, there, Daniel. Let's see. There is there's the Dow. There's the Nifty Fifty out of of uh, in India. Right there. There's the Hang Sang. So it's it's not at its all time highs or anything like that. Wonder what the all time highs are. Let's go go to a weekly a monthly chart and see what the all time highs are. Here it's loading there. Oh, they're just showing us back to 2013. So the all-time high is uh, in the uh, 32,000 area, basically. 31,000 and change, or 33, is it? 33,000 area. 33,500-ish, something like that. So it, it's got some work to do to get into the all-time highs. And then, uh, what was the other one? The uh, Nikkei. Let's see what the Nikkei is doing. The Nikkei is doing a, you know, a slow, good, steady grind on the upside here. Let's see. There is the FTSE. There is the Euro stock index. Where is the Nikkei? I don't see that. I don't see the, uh, the Nikkei on here. But that's 
the all-time high there is 39,000 and uh, you know and uh, you know we're at like 29,000 which is not bad you know it's showing some life in it that's a good thing you know all right traders we're at the end of fun we're gonna get going so this has been Doc from North America we will catch you on Thursday happy hump day to all and to all happy hump day so happy trails to you until we meet again happy trails to you to all our trading friends ta-ta for now traders <laughs>